So the Baird Weston Liberations, uh, Liberation Initiative's mission is really focusing on um, fighting for policies that don't frankly terrorize and kill uh, same gender loving and LGBTQ people and people of color. Um, seeing this uh, pandemic uh, impact uh, the people that I'm advocating for uh, very, very differently. I mean, I think, um, for example, LGBTQ homeless uh, youth aren't really seen as it is. Um, and they are even more invisible. Um, I think we, uh, we're already seeing how people of color, particularly black people, um, aren't being seen. And the fact that COVID-19 is disproportionately affecting them, we're already seeing how that's not necessarily being given as much attention from people who should be figuring out how to fix that issue. I mean, there's a lot of reporting about it, but not a lot of, from my perspective, movement on, okay, what are we gonna do about that? And I think the same goes for LGBTQ uh, and same gender loving uh, homeless youth. Before, it was just a matter of trying to find space for them, but now it's a matter of encouraging people to support the places that provide space. So there's the concern that these safe spaces won't survive to be there, to be the safe space for the LGBTQ homeless youth, which um, is just, frankly, frankly, heartbreaking. The, the party that isn't aligned with the current administration needs to, um, frankly, find a backbone and be willing to step out on faith, be willing to stick their neck out for uh, just policies, to fight for them and not uh, fight for incremental change because that is, incremental change is yet another weapon of white supremacy, of saying, oh, well, well look at us, we, we, we passed this legislation um, aren't we great? Well, if that legislation's only kicking the can down the road a little bit, I struggle to celebrate too much, especially when a lot of these policies that end up doing incremental change are fixing problems that have had monumental historical uh, devastation to people. But yet we we want to advocate for policies that just fix it a little bit when an overhaul is necessary. I would say that uh, one of the ways that being an actress in this moment has been made possible is um, the internet, Zoom. Um, I think we're still going to continue uh, what I believe it would look like is continuing to uh, use social media as a, a tool. I and mean, I think it's going to be even more, uh, the use is going to be more pervasive, but I also, uh, to the point of not just organizing for uh, gatherings, but also really pushing our um, elected officials to make virtual meetings a staple. Because I think it's been done now because there's no other way to do it. I mean, it's, you have to do it because of the pandemic. But I think in future, I think uh, we're going to be in a space where even if we still have face-to-face -face meetings, um, that virtual meetings will also be a required option. So I think that's going to be another, um, another way. And I, and I think also it's going to really enrich um, organizing. I would like to share a, a prayer which I've dedicated to the memory of Reverend Dr. Theodore W. Jennings, Jr. Jennings was a theologian and Methodist minister. He was professor of biblical and constructive theology at Chicago Theological Seminary. He was a valued mentor. Jennings theology affirmed my existence as a queer Christian. His guidance and mentorship provided me a rare opportunity to be seen and heard without judgment. 
Let us pray. O Creator, we did not see this catastrophe coming, but we saw other dangers lurking and coming into full view. So we raised our voices. We raised our voices in defiance of blatant racism and affirmation of white nationalism. We raised our voices in defiance and denouncement of homophobia, queerphobia, and transphobia. We raised our voices in defiance of patriarchy and sexism. We raised our voices in defiance of xenophobia. We raised our voices in defiance of a leader who celebrates everything we abhor as lives hang in the balance. Now we raise our voices in defiance of a leader's response to an invisible enemy that's robbing many people of their breath, voice, and life. Please keep standing or sitting with us in the midst of those trials and tribulations. Help soothe our throats and give us strength to keep raising our voices. And thanks for prophetic voices who are now ancestors. Let them help inspire and sustain us. Amen.